it's time for you all to wake up and shift your paradigm. This world is the kingdom of darkness and we are living in its last days. It won't be long before the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. The heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat and the earth and everything therein shall be burnt up. The Luciferian elite have been setting up the new world order and now they've established the globalist beast system for the rise of that wicked one and revealing of the man of sin who comes after the workings of Satan. Don't take my word for it. Read the Bible and you'll know that perilous times shall come in the last days. And we are in the last days. Brothers and sisters, it is the Remnant Warrior here from Kingdom Productions and Publishing. And I just want to welcome all of you who don't already watch this channel on a regular basis. I want to let you know that we upload new content several times a week, but at least every week. So you don't want to miss out when we upload something new. Thank you all in advance for your subscription. I love each and every one of you. Until next time, God bless you all. Hello, brothers and sisters, and welcome to our annual special edition of The Remnant Report, hosted by myself, The Remnant Warrior, along with my co-host, Brother Curtis Forty, the guest that has joined us in the years past and he's a man who needs no introduction dr aaron judkins I are you there hey I'm, I'm i'm here guys can you hear me yeah absolutely absolutely um yes uh, i can also hear you say that again no, oh I that, just, was tardious. Just... that was tardious that was saying uh, yeah okay nice. um yeah we're uh absolutely i know for me i'm thrilled to have you um you uh, are the one person that was coming on today that I've never had on with me as a guest on the Remnant Report or Return of the Historic Faith or any of the roundtable discussions that Kingdom Productions Network has done. And um, I've been a huge fan of your work for a while. I, I, I joke to people um, that I don't know if you're the Christian Indiana Jones or if uh, Dr. Burton is the Christian Indiana Jones. So I just well, say I, the Jones Dr. brothers. Yeah. yeah. You know, Dr. Burton actually has the, uh, the, the photo yeah. to prove it. That, yeah. So he, he, uh -huh. I, I default to him. Uh, <laughs> and it's in the Middle East or let's be call a spade a spade, the current war in the Middle East and how it is probably not a coincidence that it, is taking place um, at the time of year that it's happening right after Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, um, and also a high satanic holy day. Um, well, if I could just speak to that, um, you know, um, the world is experiencing uh, more turmoil uh, mm -hmm. than, than ever before. Um, it, it's you know, the, the Bible talks about birth pains and, um, you know, birth pains are, are a symptom or a sign that's, you know, that that, you know, delivery is imminent. Um, right. And so the, according to uh, the prophecies is that these birth pains are symptoms of something that's becoming nearer to an event that's been prophesied uh, in the Bible. And so it's what I call the end game. And the end game is. Um, uh, is, is, is coming upon the world in such a way that will uh, culminate uh, to uh, the what the book of Revelation, the Bible calls it, uh, the, the, the times of Jacob's trouble or the tribulation event. Uh, this is where the, the, the Battle of Armageddon takes place. And, um, and, and things are happening that are so horrific on the earth. You talked about your hunting dogs uh, that 
It says that men will wish for death to come upon them, but death will flee from them. Um, yeah. and, and if you can imagine that, you know, if, if the, the Holy Spirit in, in the body of Christ, now whether you're, you know, there's, I understand there's different views on, on, on the uh, tribulation where, where the church is taken out, you know, either pre-trib or mid-trib or post-trib. Um, and, and, and most people fall into one of those three categories of, of, in their theology. Um, but uh, for, for uh, I think most believers, um, at that last part of the tribulation, there is evil unleashed to its full extent. And we see things coming out of the bottomless pit that have been chained uh, under there for a long time that are now coming back out. Um, and so, you know, it, it's, it's, if you can imagine just evil being fully um, unleashed and unrestrained on the earth, uh, things happening in the in the heavens, things coming out of the pit from below the earth. Uh, this is this is going to be pretty pretty bad. It's it's kind of what I I say, um, you know that um, um, it, it's it's the Matrix. I, I like to compare it to the to the movie The Matrix, where Neo is trapped in the computer uh, simulation world, and but he doesn't know that he's living in a simulation. Right? He only knows his reality, and that you know nothing uh, that 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 he that he experiences seems out of out of ordinary. But then he begins to kind of wonder what was beyond what he knows. And, and so he he takes, you know, he's offered the red pill and blue pill, right? So he kind of knows something isn't right. But then, you know, he he's he's offered the, you know, this 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 information. So he says, you know, basically, if he takes the red pill, he discovers the truth. He follows the rabbit hole down to see what what's really going on. And um, and what we what we of course know is that that world was was a world of death and destruction. And uh, there was no meaning to to his uh to life in that particular world and so he steps into the next reality called zion right this is in the movie and then he uh he touches a mirror and then he basically enfolds into it the mirror is liquid and uh so he enters through the mirror into the next world and uh, it's kind of like uh, alice's adventures and uh, uh uh the adventures of uh or the alice, alice in alice adventures in wonderland it's, uh, it's about the looking glass and this yeah. is kind of the same concept is that she fell into the into the mirror into another dimension um so um I, I think, you know, Job, Job actually talks about this in the book of Job. Um, and I think it's uh, chapter 37, verse 18. He's, he's basically, you know, saying that um, how thou uh, with him spread out the sky, which is strong and is a molten looking glass. Job refers to this as a, a molten looking glass. So there's a barrier. Uh, I think that's being described here in a world um, that um, that separates, you know, the heavenly realm in, in our realm. But this is where we get the UFO phenomenon and the d- demonic activity and things that or especially on the on the higher um, holidays uh, that you had mentioned before, uh, these things become more prevalent. Uh, so this is, I think, precisely uh, some of the things that we're seeing over in the in the recent events with Israel right now. Uh, that's happening. Uh, but these, as we understand, are only birth pains to the to the major thing, a foreshadow of what's to come. And that's the uh, that's that's the part that you know, if you can if you can imagine just what the what that looks like, it's going to be terrifying. But the, the, yeah. the biblical message uh, is of hope and redemption. And, and, uh, and that's I think that's the beauty of the of the whole Bible message that, yes, there's there's another coming destruction on this earth, just like it was in the days of Noah. But there is redemption and hope for us in Jesus Christ. And so that's yeah. that's um, I think that's the message of hope for people today. That is that that's what we're 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 talking about. We're talking about this hope that the Bible describes through God's son, Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Uh, last week, matter of fact. Uh, a week ago today, the day that the, the war in Israel started, uh, Brother Tertius and I uh, did an episode uh, called Antichrist Agents of Chaos, and uh, it was about, um, I mean, we, we touched on everything you just mentioned and more, but I pointed out and read Jesus's words that during this time, Jesus says that men's hearts will literally fail them for the things that are coming up onto the earth. And what I see there is exactly what you were just mentioning, which is the, the Revelation 9 opening of the abyss. Um, I In my last book, the only time <laughs> I've ever tried my hand at fiction, I did my best to try to um, envision and put on paper what those 
who are alive at the the Revelation nine event could will possibly witness and endure and still be as biblically accurate as I could. Um, you know, I don't. I, uh, we can see what scripture says, how it describes these chimeric beings, uh, entities, um, and we can speculate or try to envision what they are and how horrible they'll be. But I don't think that our imaginations are capable of, I don't think Hollywood at its best or maybe worst um, can show us a accurate portrayal of these entities that are going to be coming up out of the abyss. Um, the Bible tells us that Apollyon or Abaddon uh, depending on whether you're pronouncing it in the Greek or the, the uh, Hebrew, the angel, the, the, the king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit, um, who I liken to Apollo, um, which uh, uh, Derek Gilbert and others would say, and I would agree, is most likely... Um, if not the fallen angel that was uh, eventually to be called the adversary, then at least one of the uh, high-ranking um, watchers. You know, uh, we talked earlier in the episode about uh, Azazel talking about how this event or this war in Israel um, happened right after Day of Atonement. Um, which brought up the uh, Azazel goat and eventually the the watcher Azazel and um, yeah you know uh, the the um you're talking about the you, you know the book of revelation as uh, as as we're describing these events that that's that's yet future for us but you know it also describes you know we talked about the seven year period of the tribulation but um you know the antichrist really plays a main role in this because he rises to power and he creates an artificial right. peace between Israel and her enemies. Absolutely. Um, and that's yeah. that was like the the main point was that if this war culminates into what it's capable of culminating into then we could see the man of lawlessness uh come to power out of this, you know, to Right, bring, you know the, the the antichrist actually the Bible gives gives it gives the Antichrist a, a couple of key titles, if you will. Um, it, it, this the Antichrist, by the way, is the final world ruler before Jesus yeah. Christ return, returns in the second advent to send up set up his kingdom on the on the earth. The Bible calls him, get this, the Assyrian. Uh, yeah. And you say, well, where does it say that? It's over in Isaiah yeah. chapter ten, verse five. It says, "Oh Assyrian, the rod of my anger and the staff in their hand is mine indignation." Uh, so yeah, we see the title of the Assyrian and the rod of my anger. Uh, but yeah. also there's other couple of titles that this is given to in regards to identifying the Antichrist and, uh, and what Daniel's coming prince is. This is called the man of sin and the son of perdition. Uh, yeah. He's also called the wicked one or wicked. Uh, but uh, these these particular titles um, are, are specifically referring to the Antichrist because the Antichrist, uh, he just won't be another normal world leader. He will be. No. Um, somebody that is uh, he super start off that people. way, but uh, and I'm not saying that he necessarily will, but he he may start off as a man. But the Bible's very clear that um, you know, he gets his power from the dragon, his seed, his authority. Satan is going to enter into him, whether it's from the beginning or if it's something that happens, you know, at the deadly head wound or you know, um. It's funny that you're bringing this up because we brought up the Assyrian last week, and oh, really? We also, yeah, and we also brought up how um, in the Septuagint, uh, you know, it God is saying that. I mean, he literally says, and we 
talked about uh, Revelation 9 in uh, talking about this, but that giants are coming to fulfill my wrath, it says in the Septuagint. And <laughs> yeah, that's interesting because I, I, I wrote a book about this um, back in 2012, uh, and it's called Alien Agenda, The Return of the Nephilim. I, I co-wrote it with uh, one of my colleagues, Dr. Michael McDaniel. Um, and we talk about this, uh, this, this, this whole scenario about uh, the UFO phenomenon, the alien abductions, uh, um, uh, forbidden history, stargates, um, tribulation, revelation, and, and, and the return of the Nephilim. So we get into all this. It's, it's, uh, uh, this, this book has, um, uh, was debuted in Roswell, New Mexico back in 2012. And, uh, it, it, uh, it did very well. Was the debut it. Yeah. I was, as a matter of fact, I was asked to speak at, at one of the conferences in, um, it was a secular conference in, uh, Nevada a number of years ago. And I was the only, uh, Christian speaker that was invited to come speak. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, this particular book that I wrote, um, gets into all that it's it's a uh, uh it, it breaks it down to where you can understand uh what this is why all, we talked about the, the the birth pains and the signs and the the foreshadows of the, of the of the you know main event if you will that will will happen in, in the book of revelation but um it's something that we should not be fearful of uh right. because we we um we are not children of the night we are children of the day we do right. not uh, fear the uh you know the, the coming wrath that's uh that, that that's something different but look you know uh, we have we have almost um, um, you know um, every sign uh, that uh, that's been given that that's come forth in, in, in Bible prophecy um, has been 100 percent correct and so if if, 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 if the prophecies are, are, are talking about um, you know these these events that are coming forth with the you know with these giants and in, in, in the Battle of Armageddon these army these armies that are coming you know it, 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 just imagine you know I, I referenced the Matrix movie, earlier but if you can imagine this great battle as if in the lord of the rings you know the the, the great battles of the, the armies of the lord uh the lord himself uh fighting against the uh satanic armies of darkness it's it's uh it, it's 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 quite amazing how it reads out but we we see that there's there's something happening here uh with that and you know that you know we talked about the syrian um there was a book written uh by um david bush and it's titled the Assyrian, and um, it really gives you an education on how the nations line up in the in the last days. Um, I just started that. I, I I read that book a long time ago, but it's by David Bush, the Assyrian, and he makes a case yeah, for the Antichrist, uh, and uh, identified as Assyrian and the King of the North, who brings that false peace and security yeah. to Israel. Look, once he confirms that covenant in the in the ten nations, you know those ten nations are the major players that uh -huh. that um that are in that conflict and uh so we see this <clears throat> these nations spelled out in um uh in genesis 15 we see the 10 nations spelled out uh, but then we see them come up again later these 10 nations but people say well you know who are the 10 nations and these 10 nations are actually the 10 nations that surround israel right now um so you know remember that um uh that that the the uh the statue of never uh, never can yeah. and uh so um you know this this statue. When 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 I learned about this, uh, it kind of blew me away because um, this statue is um, is given in the book of Daniel, and um, this this is in Daniel um, uh, that talks about the uh, uh, this this uh, this metal statue. And basically, what happens is um, you know King Nebuchadnezzar has this dream, and he cannot remember the dream, and so he comes. You know, he basically gets all of his people together, and he says. You know his his magicians and, and and the and the fortune tellers and he says, look, I had a dream. I can't remember the dream, but I need you to tell me what I dreamt, and then I need you to tell me the meaning of what that was. And, I, and I sometimes wondered. I mean, I, I, you can see it written, and it, it does say that he couldn't remember it. But I sometimes wonder if if maybe he could remember it, but he wanted to know for sure that he was getting an accurate translation of the dream what it meant well you know and, um you know here's what he tells his guys they came back and go they, they here's what the bible says they that you know the people come back his main guys his his counsel you know and, and they said look if you just tell us what you had dreamt maybe we can give you an answer he yeah. says look i can't remember it he, he 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 specifies again he can't remember it but look if you don't do this i'm not only gonna um kill you i'm gonna kill your families and turn all your houses into dunghills 
Um, Basically, you say this is your lives are on the line here and your family's lives are on the line. So, you know, so so I think God is is uh, is, is is showing, you know, his hand in this because the king cannot remember it. Absolutely. But then when Daniel gets called up and he he says, here's what you dreamt. Now the king believes him. Right. Because he, he said, OK, this is what happens. He dreamt of he dreamt of a statue, King Nebuchadnezzar. He's he's the king of Babylon. And there's a statue, which is the head of gold. It's got chest and arms of silver, the belly and thighs of brass, the legs of iron. And then that, the feet of iron mixed with clay. So we see. Clay, yeah. So we see this this uh, order of uh, of metals. Okay, so the, the so the head of gold. So Daniel says basically, oh king, he says you're the head of gold. You're the king of Babylon, and, and King Nebuchadnezzar. They ruled for seventy years. That was the first kingdom. It was it was the greatest kingdom. So these are in order of of, of the greatest to, to to the least. So so King Nebuchadnezzar, Babylon's the head of gold. The chest and the arms of silver are the next Gentile empires to come and rule after. The king uh, after King uh, Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, and that is the Medo Persian Empire. Yeah, the Medo Persian Empire represents the chest and the arms of silver. That's the next world empire to come. And so we see that King Nebuchadnezzar is gone. He leaves his grandson in charge. He throws a big party. I'm summarizing here. He throws a big party. They're running out of you know plates and silverware. So he sends his guys. Now remember, you know uh, they've taken um, Israel captive. They 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 are um, uh, they are captive. Daniel and, and all the Hebrews, they're they're captive in Babylon. Okay. And so he he sends his guys, he goes, Hey, go go get the temple implements that we we uh we got out of Jerusalem, bring them, bring them up and we'll use them at the party. And his mother, the print, the princess, she comes out, she she hears what's going on. She goes, Look, you can't do this. You can, these are holy implements from their from the temple. You can't touch this. And and basically he ignores her. And this is where we get um something very interesting that that's happening here is that um when 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 he does this, now he's acting king of Babylon. And uh, so he calls for the, the the holy implements of the Jewish temple, which they kept, you know, they they, they captured and brought back into to Babylon. They're using these implements at the party, which is the plates and the silver and the cups. And then all of a sudden, the Bible says that there was a hand uh, that that wrote upon the wall. In the in the phrase, this is this is just this hand appeared, and it wrote this phrase: "Mene mene to kill you farson." And this is where we get the modern day term. Uh, the handwriting on the wall. We on hear the that. Wall. Here's yeah. the handwriting on the wall because you know this is it's, it's kind of like you know here's your sign. You know you're you're about to get you're you're giving this message, and so <clears throat> whether it was you know God Himself or an angel of the Lord, He wrote this message. Mene mene to kill you farson, which means you have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. Found wanting. Yep. And and it says that the king, uh, you know, the grandson who's left in charge of the kingdom, it says <clears throat> his knees knocked together and his loins were loosened. Why? Because now he's afraid. He's fearful. And what he did not realize was while they were throwing the big party, the Medes and the Persians who teamed up together diverted the Euphrates River to drop the river of the moat uh, of the water level level down, so they could simply walk under the moat uh, of the of the city, walk under the moat, and probably water that was probably waist high or knee high, and they simply walked under the moat that was meant for the defense, and they took the city without force, uh, and they killed. Uh, the king and, and, and everybody that night, he died. Uh, so this is the next um, Gentile world empire to come up on the scene is that this chest and arms of silver is the Medes and the Persians and they're ruling together. OK, they rule for um, like 49 years. This is this is, you know, this is part of the part of the statue. What's next on that statue is the belly and the thighs of brass. This represents another kingdom that's to come. It's called the Great the Grecian Empire. And the Grecian Empire um, was 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 although Nebuchadnezzar of the Babylon was the greatest, and the Medes and the Persians were next. Look, the, the Greco, the, the 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 Grecian Empire was was formidable. Uh, this was unlike Nebuchadnezzar, unlike Darius with the uh, with the Persians. Alexander, Alexander although he's specifically great. named in Scripture, he's mentioned by another title in Scripture, and that's the rough goat. And and, and so this goes back to Daniel eight uh, uh, verse twenty uh, and verse twenty one, where it specifically calls. The, the, the kingdom of, um, of of Greece, the rough goat. This is Alexander the Great. Um, and so we see Alexander the Great coming in. He is the belly and the, and the thighs of of, uh, of brass. And uh, he rules for 434 years. This, the, not, not Alexander the Great does it, but the, the, the Grecian Empire is in power for 434 years. And so we see that this this is uh, one of the longest standing Gentile empires that, that basically is, is uh, uh, when when Alexander was alive conquered the entire known world. There's some some great history on that. Um, of course, uh, Alexander, his dad was uh, Philip of Macedonia, King Philip of Macedonia. They were not Christians, but what Alexander inadvertently did was spread the Koine Greek language throughout the known world, which was in in our modern day language would be similar to our English. 
that's 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 spoken pretty much worldwide. It's known worldwide. Uh, same with Koine Greek, and so the Koine Greek actually helped uh, spread the scriptures uh, when when uh, when the when the scriptures were be, being copied and rewritten and then put into books where people can can you know can take these scrolls and and they would you know they would send multiple copies of these scrolls out. But then um, in the New Testament, they begin to rewrite uh, these scrolls from Aramaic over into Greek. And it was because of the Koine Greek language that Alexander inadvertently helped spread the message of, of, uh, of, of the Bible throughout the known world because everyone knew that language. Um, but the next uh, thing that we see on that uh, statue is the legs of iron. Now, this is pretty interesting because now we're, we're, we're into a metal that's, that's uh, uh, of iron. It's, it's, it's basically kind of unforgiving. It's uh, solid. It, it's, um, and, and some people say this is, this is Rome. The Bible doesn't specifically mention the Roman Empire, although in history we know that the Roman Empire came next. Uh, most people refer to that as the Greco-Roman Empire. Why? Because they just kind of picked up where, where Greece left off. You know, Alexander dies. He doesn't have an heir, you know, but he has four generals and the four generals um, basically fight for power. And uh, two of them get knocked out. And it comes down to two, Ptolemy and Seclusus. Uh, uh, and so Ptolemy takes the, the the kingdom, you know, the southern empire, which includes Egypt. We get the Ptolemy rules and the Seclusus takes the northern uh, parts of the empire. And so uh, most scholars think that this is the, not just the Roman Empire, but the Greco-Roman Empire representing both legs, uh, which basically split into two legs under the kingdom of Ptolemy and Seclusus. Uh, and so we see that these uh, th this empire is, is uh, of course, we know this empire to be in, in power when Jesus Christ is born in Nazareth. The Roman Empire uh, is, is uh, uh, already in power. Uh, but look, the next thing on that statue is the feet of iron mixed with clay. And let me let me just tell you where we're at with this. That that feet with iron mixed with clay. This is an obvious metal um, that's intermixed with clay that does not mix. It is uh, they they you cannot mix these two substances together. This is why it's interesting because it shows us two foreign um, materials that are contrary to each other. One of iron, one of clay. These do not mix, but they're ten. There's ten toes to the statue. We are not at the ten toes yet. The ten toes haven't happened yet. And so when you see that this outline of the entire Gentile world empire that's have ruled and will ever rule is on this statue. And look, I, I, I know people say, well, look where we're at on this thing. There's, it's, it's a really fascinating study, but look, there's, there's these 10 toes that ha are yet to come into power. And when they do, this is going to usher in this whole thing with the Antichrist and the book of revelation, because now we get the 10 toes. And now we know who those 10 toes are. Those are the 10 Kings that are ruling the 10 nations and where are they at? Where are those 10 kings of the 10 nations at? These, those, these are the 10 nations that are surrounding Israel today. That's why the Bible has titled the Antichrist the Assyrian. So, so when we start putting this together, we realize there's something happening here with the Assyrian that, that comes into power as the Antichrist. Um, and then these 10 nations that rise up with him. But then two of them immediately turn on him. They come into some kind of you know, peace treaty with Israel, but then two of them turn on the Antichrist and he puts them down very quickly. Uh, this is what the book of Revelation talks about. So we see that these 10 nations are the 10 nations that surround Israel now, and they've been named even back in the book of Genesis. The names throughout history have changed a little bit, but it's the same nations that are surrounding Israel now. And if you just look on a map, you'll see these today, you'll see these 10 nations that surround Israel. These are the nations that are really going to be uh, invoked into the to the uh, last days against Israel. So what we're seeing now with what's going on with Israel is just but a symptom, a birth pain of what's to come. Yeah, it, it the final world ruler is anti. Christ in that he's against Christ, but also opposite. But I, I think that a very good argument can be made that this, even though he will be the, the leader of the, the world, that he will be someone who is accepted as the Jewish Messiah. And yeah, yeah, that's for sure. He's he's going to be accepted. Um, that's well, why you know, I, I say I say that because a lot of people, you know, believe that he could be an American president or a lot of other uh, different leaders or uh, things from other uh, religious texts. Um, like there's a, a big movement that believes that, you know, he'll be 
and it's based on the the title the Assyrian that he he'll be um, Muslim or not if not Muslim at least Arabic um, and whether he will or won't be I think that with the things that are, are, are going on in Israel now the fact that that along with the fact that uh, even though the Bible says that the the ten kings um, have received no kingdom as of yet, but will receive power one hour with the beast, um, I, I think you're correct in that they are um, the nations that we see surrounding uh, the modern day uh, state of Israel. And all of these nations are... Uh, Muslim countries re religious wise and it is going to be pretty impossible for the Zionist Jews in Israel to accept a uh, Muslim from any um, you know sect of Islam as their Messiah uh, there may be a way for that to happen, but I, I think the way that that happens is is with the with the uh, with the power that uh, that the false um, um, prophet has that that aligns with the Antichrist, and I, uh, I, I think this actually gives him some kind of legitimacy uh, through the religious world system that's going to be established at the time. And look, we we ha we have to understand where we're at um, when, when this all happens. We have Israel. Okay, which is now a future from us. But when they set, when they signed the seven year peace treaty, they have built the third temple. They have re implemented the Old Testament sacrifices, which are not necessary. That Jesus was our final sacrifice on the cross. The death, burial, and resurrection Paul talks about in the Bible is the ultimate sacrifice for sin. But see, the, the, the Jewish people as a whole has not accepted Jesus Christ as their Messiah. They're still looking for him. So, yes, they are going to accept the Antichrist because why? The Bible says that he will have lying signs and wonders. When we talked about this final yeah. Gentile world empire of iron mixed with miry clay in Daniel chapter 2. It says that they won't cleave to one another, even as iron is not mixed with, with the clay. So these ten toes of, 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 of Daniel on, on the statue is the time of the Antichrist that we're talking about. It's the repeat of the days of Noah, and it's the return of the Nephilim. Why? Yeah, because we see... Absolutely. It, it, it would definitely be, I, I think we can all agree that it, the Nephilim are going to return. The, the fallen ones are going to return during this uh, final period of great tribulation. Yeah, um, you know, but here, here's an interesting thing I want to I want to share with you uh, while it's on my mind is, is, you know, people say, well, that's fine. That's your opinion. Actually, it's what the Bible says. Yeah. And so let's, let's, look at, let's look at the scripture about it, because it says in Daniel chapter two, verse 42 through 43, it says that in, in the. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and, and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Verse 43, it says, Whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay. Now listen to this. They shall not mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave to one another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. That's the context of the verse. Who is the they? They shall not mingle themselves with the seed of men. Who is the they that the Bible is talking about? Those are the fallen angels, I think. The fallen angels and the ten kings are the return of the Nephilim in Revelation. And, and that's why I, I titled the book Alien Agenda, The Return of the Nephilim, because it's to usher in that kingdom of the Antichrist to prepare for the, co the, the coming cosmic battle. And so the forces of evil are planning for Armageddon. They're, 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 they're ramping this up with the hybrid program species, I think, in the, like, like they did back in the Old Testament. This is, yeah, this absolutely. is, Solomon says there's nothing new under the sun. They've done this before. They will do it again in a little bit different way, but it's the same thing. They, they, they are mingling themselves, just like iron is not mixed with clay. It says the Bible, Daniel chapter six, the Bible says that they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. So if we look at that in context, we see that there's something very sinister going on here. And this is way back. This goes way back before the flood. When when uh, the watchers uh, come down, you know, they, you know, these 200 class watcher angels come down and descend on Mount Hermon. Uh -huh. and, and, and so there's things happening. I'm sure Dr. Jeb Burton and, and Gary Wayne has probably talked about this uh, prior. But look, yeah. there's something happening here because they realize you know, the, uh, you know, in, in the apocryphal book of, of the book of Enoch, they realized, hey, we, we messed up here. And, and at least some of them did. And so they, they kind of got together in a council and they said, look, we, we got to get Enoch. We can't go before the Lord now. Um, why? Because they let Jude said they left their first estate. And when they, they right. when they did, they, they went and they entered into a physicality they could not turn around and go back out of. 
So they had to die a physical, natural death. So they get Enoch, you know, and they said, look, you know, you got to go before the Lord and see if there's a way out of this for us. And Enoch says, look, I don't want to do this, but I'll do it. And, and he says, it's not a good idea, but he goes before the Lord and he comes back and he says, there is no hope for you. you, you you're done. And so, and, and so this is, this is why, um, uh, you know, you have in Genesis one, you have the, you know, the creation event, right. And then you have a return for details throughout, you know, the early chapters of Genesis. It gives you a broad outline, paints the creation with the broad brush. Then it comes back in the following chapters and fills in those details about creation. Yeah. Okay. Genesis and then by the time you get to Genesis 10, you know, you're, you know, Genesis six, you're, you've already got these giants in the earth and fallen angels. And, and by 10, you, you, you've got the entire world already wiped out by the flood. And so you see wickedness and evil, uh, per, per, you know, uh, you know, pervading through the earth. And, and so this is what's happening. And again, uh, that, that we're going to see come, you know, coming in the last days. So that's, that's what I think are, is interesting about that particular uh, uh, passage in Daniel in, 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 in reference to revelation, but exactly, you know, how this is, is what th these birth pains that we're seeing now, uh, with the uh, with the with the war in in Israel against Hamas right now that's happening, and so Daniel is prophesying about the last days, and, and we talked about Genesis six, uh, we talked about Jude where it says that you know that these angels left their first estate, um, but the final Gentile world empire is going to be those ten toes, and and you know uh, for those who want to you know look at this a little bit more and read on it, um, you know this is all outlined in the in the book that that I referenced earlier that I wrote called Alien Agenda: The Return of the Nephilim. Um, and, and, and it's been out for a while now, but it's exactly kind of the things that, that we're seeing, you know, lead up to these current current events. And um, uh, this will give you a really a great idea about uh, where we're at and what is yet to come. Well, I'm definitely going to check the book out. Um, I, it, it's one that sounds very intriguing and it's one that I'm not familiar with. Um, I, it's uh, you, people can find it on my website. It's uh available at AaronJudkins.com, AaronJudkins.com. Um, well, I, as well I'm, as, gonna, uh, I'm gonna put a link to it in the description, so uh, that way people can just click on the link and it'll. Yeah, be it's it's available there, and I've, you know all of my other work is available there, um, including the uh, last uh, book I wrote um, on the Gobekli Tepe in Southeast Turkey, which incidentally enough. Um, uh, Dr. Burton and I are working on a forthcoming work, um, a larger work on that, that will be um, hopefully in book format uh, next year. Uh, but this is definitely uh, something that, that, um, that is part of that tapestry that, that, um, that we've been talking about with all this, that this also dovetails into that. Um, and so we see that what Solomon has said is indeed, there's nothing new under the sun. And in the very, very um, um, earliest uh, days, which what, um, uh, you know, archaeologists, called the Neolithic period, I think it's right after the Tower of, of uh, Babel is we see these the scattering event, but these people are in these enclosures at Gobekli Tepe, and they're, they're doing something in there, these enclosures that are performing libation offerings and, um, and ceremonial uh, sacred space. And so uh, we see that, uh, uh, you know, just not too long after Noah, these generations of people have already broken away. It and they're, and they're worshiping these, No, it doesn't. And they're worshiping, I think, two particular entities at Gobekli Tepe. I talk about what those entities are. I think I found them on the stones. If you're familiar with Gobekli Tepe, uh, this is yeah. very the very earliest forms of deity worship. Um, and uh, that's why this is so important because, um, you know, it's right after the flood. God's already wiped out the world uh, with the flood. He saves Noah and, 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 and his family. Look, but there was a lot more room on that ark. That ark, uh, according to some scholars, was only at 40% capacity. It could have held uh, thousands of people but um, they chose not to, to go on. And, and the hope and the message is, is that, um, you know, there's another coming judgment, just like there was in the days of Noah. Um, and Noah preached for a long time, 100 and what was it, 150 years. Um, and, uh, and so we just keep uh, sharing the truth of the gospel. We keep sharing the hope and the message uh, that, yes, uh, there is a coming judgment, but there is a, there's a hope, there's a way of an escape for that. And God has uh, given us um, uh, an option of, of uh, his son, through uh, through his son, through the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, we have salvation, which he took on that punishment for us, uh, so we can have eternal eternal life with him. So uh, this is this is a, a um, uh, the message of of Christ and, and the cross. Uh, it's uh, very simple and and, and it's, it's diametrically opposed to what we're seeing with uh, the uh, the attacks in Israel uh, and the uh, the forced um, uh, ideology upon the world, not just Israel, but upon the world, that we will yeah. take every Jew and every Christian and kill them. 
if they don't convert uh, to this uh, form of Islam. And so it's it's a it's a system uh, uh, of of ideology that is at the very heart of it evil. It's the face of evil, and this is what we're seeing now. So um, uh, we just um, need to need to understand where we're at, I guess, theologically uh, in, in these times, and what we can do uh, uh, to help. Um, uh, but prayer is prayer is the is the one thing that we can do. So people say, "What can we do?" Is pray. Absolutely. We can pray. Uh, pray for uh, the people of Israel and pay, uh, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Brother Tertius, um, I saw your message saying that you had to go. Um, thank you again for hosting with me. Um, I am sorry if uh, you had anything that you wanted to talk with uh, Dr. Judkins about or ask that you weren't able to. Um, it says you're still here. If you do have uh, a question that you wanted to ask him, uh, feel free. Okay, no, uh, no problem, uh, Jeremy. I thanks a lot. I'm I'm sorry that I need to go and everything. Um, oh, that's okay, brother. Um, Doctor Judkins, I'm. Uh, I apologize uh, for not really speaking a lot and stuff, but I wish we had more time. But um, I will I will set you on Facebook and and add you if that's if that's fine with you. Oh yeah, of course, certainly that's fine, and um, uh, you can just message me directly there, and uh, uh, I can correspond with you that way. When when you have more time to ask your question, and and I can answer it, I would love to correspond with you. That would be fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, and may Christ Jesus bless you guys, and um, thanks a lot for everything. Thank you all for having me. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Uh, he he he's in he's in South Africa, so he's on the other side of the world, and so it's uh, getting later and later over yes, there. Yes, yes. why he had to go. Uh, All right. But, you know, I uh, am extremely appreciative of you joining uh, late or not. Um, it's just not a big deal at all. Uh, I was very, very happy that you were able to join us. Um, yeah, I thanks for having me. And, and um, sorry, I couldn't get the video up. Just uh, you know, uh, snag a picture from uh, from my website and uh, and put it up there as a steal if you want, and uh, okay. you can do that. I definitely will. Um, this has been basically just a, a laid back roundtable type discussion. Um, I, I'm actually yeah. glad that we were able to do it the way we did it because even though we talked some about um, current events and the end times, um, we didn't talk very much about it, uh, and Last week, like I said, uh, Tertius and I did a, a full episode um, the day that the mm. war started without even knowing that the war started because we recorded Oh, it. wow. Wow. Yeah, and, and then yeah that's amazing. It. Yeah, I edited well, I, it. I hope, and just, I, I I hope I was able to add to the add to the conversation today um, and, um, you know, um, add some value to the to the roundtable. And uh, maybe it worked out better that way. Gary had time and, and I saw, you know, Jed left. Um, had I guess he had to leave as soon as I came on. Yeah. But I guess it worked out. Everybody had more time to speak. Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I did want to ask you something. Um, OK. The A friend of mine who is also um, uh, a part of our ministry, he's one of the hosts of um, Return of the Historic Fate. That's okay. uh, it's a show that's. Uh, about the anti-Nicene church and um, he actually lives right down the road from you in, in Grand Mary. Uh, Grand That's Mary. right, yeah. And he may have uh, gotten in touch with you through Messenger. Uh, he did, and he did, and um, I, I, I will answer his question. I have not yet, but I will take okay. the time to, to answer that. Good, okay. Well, that, that was all. I just, he was, he was supposed to join us today, but wasn't, he ended up. Right, like, yeah, there's, yeah, a lot going on today and so yeah. it's, there's there's my phone. Well, listen, I'll, I'll let you go. And um, thanks for having me on. Well, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. I hope I can have you on again soon, brother. God bless. Okay. All right. I am the Remnant Warrior saying until next time, grace and peace and God bless you all.